doing? Oh, happy Sunday. Today is Sunday the 24th of July, 2022. How is it the end of July already? That's all I'd like to know. And I am phenomenally excited because we are doing block seven of the Quilt Along With John uh, summer quilt. Welcome, lovely to have you. Um, <clears throat> a lot of you have seen my first attempt at piecing this normally. Um, I am taking full ownership of the fact this is rubbish. <clears throat> so I had a complete and utter meltdown because I thought I was a reasonably good sewer and I thought my blocks were normally pretty accurate. And then I made this and I, um, I basically wanted to give up sewing and never sew ever again. Um, and what I realized is with all of these Y seams over here, it doesn't matter how accurate your quarter inch is over here, and this is a, a, a smidge too big. If you actually did the Y seam like that, and you can see I'm a little bit too high over there, your whole block can be out by in this case, half an inch. Um, and when I showed Sylvia, um, she just burst out laughing and said, gosh, if yours is that rubbish, how dreadful is mine gonna be? So I thought to myself, I would not make your lives more difficult. I would rather actually, let's do this as English paper piecing, which is what I've done. So there are two aspects to the quilt, for, to this quilt block. First of all is the English paper piecing side. Um, and then the second piece is the applique side. So what I'm going to do now, simply for ease, I'm going to show you the applique side of things. Um, and as you know, I'm terribly efficient. When I rotate the camera, I use my arms and pick the camera up and rotate it. And we go like that. <laughs> <laughs> terribly efficient, terribly. One day I'll be able to have everything I need to be able to do it. Now, anybody who's done any form of applique before, I think you know how to do this. I use a product called Bondweb. Um, it comes and it's got a piece of greaseproof paper on one side. <clears throat> then it's got a little bobbly glue bitty bit on this side. And for my life, just wanting to make things easier, I just put a big bit of Bondweb on a piece like this and then take my templates and cut out the template of what we have. That actually brings me to a very good point. When you get your pattern, forgive me, I told you, professional, not really. So when you get your pattern, you're gonna have two parts to your templates. You're gonna have one that looks like this, that reads, it'll be different there, it'll say applique and EPP templates. And it will look like that, where you've got one of each of them and you've got the picture on it, but you've only got one of each of them. This is what you're gonna use for the applique section, because you're gonna have this. Then for the EPP section, what I thought would make my life easier, because I personally hate when I've gotta go and copy page H, do one, copy one, it drives me insane. So what I'd rather did was, I did it two ways. First of all, with a white background like that, where the, where the lid of the machine was down, but I also did a black version like that. I just personally prefer the black version, so I did a bit of both for everybody. And what I've done there, as you can see, you can then cut out each of these templates and you've got all the numbers of H's that you need on both of these pieces. So there'll be two pieces of paper, two black versions, and then there'll be a white version of them as well, where you'll have everything available to you. But on top of that, you'll also have what I'm calling the master sheet, which will have everything on it from there as the master sheet, the master template. So don't worry about that. You've got them all in your kit um, and in your paper. But what I've done differently is obviously on these, it's a lot easier just to print one and go from there. If you're buying a pattern from Natasha, you're only gonna get one of these, so you will need to photocopy them. If you are downloading them from me, you'll need to print it four times, these templates, um, because you need four of them to make four of the blocks. So that is where we are. So in order to do the applique section, what you do is you get your bond web onto here, you then take your template, you, it's very, very um, professional. You literally just lay your little template on there. This is now number N. Number N is my green section over here. And all I'm doing then is I'm holding it down. I just take a pencil 
and I trace around it. Okay, and you can see I'm being very, very loose about it. And I'm okay with that because if it's, I like it to be a little bit organic for my applique because there's no stem of it on any flower or any tree that's ever been perfect. Now I always write the number or the name of my template in there. I always have, always will. I just find that's easier for me. And then when I cut this out, I don't cut, I cut on the inside of the line over here. Let me show you what I mean. So the bit that I cut off over here has all of my line on it. You see there? And when I've got left, it doesn't have any line on it at all. I just find that's the easiest way of doing it because then your piece isn't too long or too um, wide. I just, that's what works for me. You must do it what works for you. And I just cut out my section N for November. This is in my dark green section. And I know I've jumped to the end, but what I wanted to do was to show you how the applique worked um, and then do the EPP because it just made life a little bit more simpler. So you can see I've still got my trace out line all the way along here of where I traced out my template for number N. And what I've got left of my number N doesn't have any lines on it at all. So we're gonna do that for all of the applique um, pieces like that. We're gonna do it exactly like that. Now, once we've got them all on and we're all ready and you've cut them all, you're going to take them, I'm gonna move this over so slightly so you have them all in place. So I've cut out my number N, I've cut out my light green number K, I've cut out my light green number M for Mike, my light green O for Oscar, my light green L for Lima. And what I've done is I've always been consistent. So when I've traced out my pieces, I've made sure that I've got all of my letters in the same direction. And the reason that's important, especially if your fabric's directional, is that if you did it like that for your number N, when you cut it out, it's gonna be the wrong way round. So you need to make sure that you are doing it, that these are all consistent. If you want them with the letters facing down, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure that they are all the same way round when you cut them out. That is the most important thing there. Right, so we've now cut out all of our pieces over here. I've got the Bondaware pre-put on the back there. We're gonna start off with our dark green section in the middle. Now in the pattern, I describe exactly how you do this. And you'll notice that this big bit over here, this purple triangle, is meant to have the stem coming out of the middle of it. And by that, I mean, if you look over here, that is meant to be in the middle of my purple section at the bottom. And then when it goes to the top, it's in the middle of my flower at the top. So in order to get that to happen, all I've done is I've folded a line in the middle of my triangle over here. So you can see I've just got a little marking point of where to put this. So I'm gonna take the little piece of Bondaweb paper off the back. You can see I just peel that off. And now this, is able to be glued down to my block. So I place the short end over here in the center of my block over there. And I take this and I make sure that the short end over here is in the middle of the section that I've just folded at the bottom in my purple triangle. So I get that into position and when I'm happy, I then hold it down and do it. Now, if it's some, for some reason you find that this is a little bit too long and it's coming into your block, all you do is you just take your scissors and you trim off a tiny little bit. And by tiny, I mean, uh, this is how much I trimmed off. It's minuscule. So you need to just make sure that if you are trimming off, trim off tiny bit by tiny bit by tiny bit to get everything lined up. We don't wanna be whipping off huge chunks of it and then nothing lines up and it doesn't work again. So then all you're doing with, with Bondaweb, you don't need to move your iron around. You literally just hold your iron down on the piece 
and it should fuse on its own with no problems in about 10, 15 seconds. Don't hold your iron for any longer than that because it'll burn. And there you go. You can see that's fused down beautifully. Just finger touch it to check it's not moving and mine isn't. So we're all good on that. So now we've done our middle section over here. Now it's time to do our M section and our K section. Now with these, sorry, I've just realized I've got these wrong around. With these, you know that the short end over here is going to line up exactly in the halfway section of that and that you've got a tiny little gap between your stems over here. Now, if I turn this round, you'll notice that this is a little bit long over here. So all I need to do now is take my pair of scissors. That's all lined up over there perfectly in the middle, but I can see I need to trim off a fair bit over there to get this centered. So you can see I'm lining that up perfectly there. That works brilliantly. That's lined up perfectly. So I'm now ready to piece that, stitch that, bleh, glue that bit down using my iron. I just take the little piece of paper off. Oops. I line this up again and check that's in the middle over there, which it is. And that's in the middle over there, which it is. And then I use the little nose of my iron to line that in place over there for about five, 10 seconds. And over there to get me about five, 10 seconds. And then I put my iron over the whole section for about eight to 10 seconds, just to make sure that that's all secured down beautifully. And there we go. That is all secured down nicely there. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing over here. And again, my piece is a little bit long. Um, I did do this on purpose because I think it's important to be able to show you when your block doesn't quite fit, how we actually go about checking that and correcting it. So over there, you can see that lines up beautifully now. That's absolutely perfect. Lines up perfectly at the bottom here. It's perfect over here. I peel the little bit of paper off. I line that up again. And I'm not moving my iron at all. I just hold it in place, make it work that way, and it's brilliant. And there we go. That is now set with all my stems. And you can see by doing it like that, it's not coming off. So all that's left to put on are my little leaves. Now this is creative license. You can put your leaves wherever you like. Um, I'm just gonna take the little piece of paper off it first before I start positioning. Only because these are smaller pieces, they're a little bit more difficult to place. Now with these, it doesn't really matter if they are um, a little bit bigger or smaller than the template because they're leaves, it doesn't really matter. Um, I I'm gonna keep them even so that they're in the same place. I quite like that position there. And again, all you do, just lower your iron on it. And boom. You have completed the block with the bonder web. So all you would do now is you would go and take your sewing machine and you would stitch along the outsides of all of these three, um, all these five sections, the three stems and the two leaves, to be able to make sure um, that these then stay down how you like them. Now, I've just noticed that that leaf is a little bit higher than the other one. I'm okay with that. If you're not, bonder web, it does secure down. Um, you can potentially just try and remove it. I'm not too worried about it. I think that's really good. I'm very happy with that. And yeah, it's a very, very pretty block. Now we're gonna make four of these. In order to start off by doing them, you're gonna have all the fabric that you, you, you're using. I'm doing these in a slightly different colorway for tomorrow's show. Um, I keep talking about a show tomorrow. If any of you don't know, uh, sorry, I'm just pressing the fabric because you can see you've got lots of creases and things in them. I'm just pressing the fabric before I cut them because I think you get a much cleaner cut once your fabric is nice and flat. I always do that. <clears throat> so my show tomorrow, I, I do a, day, a monthly demonstration with a lady called Natasha McCarty who has um, a show called Natasha Makes. So I'm very proud to be able to bring this quilt to her for the show tomorrow. We're going to be making four of these blocks for this quilt. 
um, and I love the way this quilt is looking. It is coming together so nicely. And I'm very pleased that this has become English paper piecing because it's such a wonderful, wonderful art of stitching that is really, really mindful. And you just, you're forced to stop and just to enjoy what you're doing. And you get to enjoy the piecing a little bit more differently than you do to when you're doing normal machine piecing. And I personally, I love it. Our light purple, we've only got one piece that we're doing out of that, so I don't need to press too much of that fabric. Um, and in fact, I'm gonna make my life easier and I'm just gonna cut a piece off because we don't need all of that for the moment. Um, and then we've got this gorgeous, gorgeous piece over here, which is the Damask Flower by Macau, uh, by Cafe. Again, you don't need a huge amount of this piece. You need a four, I can't remember how big it is actually. I'm just gonna cut a chunk of this off as well because we don't need the whole piece. Um, these ones, we don't need the whole piece either, but with this one, we're gonna be a bit more selective of how we fussy cut the fabric out, I think. So I've cut a larger section there than I need. And the yellow, we definitely don't need that much. I'm just gonna cut a section off here because you really don't need a huge amount of this fabric. It just makes your life easier simplifying how much fabric you need for this. There we go. And then we're going to be doing our green and our blues. Sorry, our two green colours, green and blues. Where did I come up with that one? So these are going to be for our plique sections. So where I just showed you how you would pin the applique on, I can actually now show you how you would actually put the applique section, well, from start to finish, really. So what we're gonna do is make these as flat as we can do. These have both got selvages on. I always think it's important, especially when you're doing applique, to cut your selvages off because you always end up with this situation where you potentially have a little bit of your selvage left in the um, piece that you've cut off. And especially with a plique, you haven't really got much wiggle room to hide it if you do have that happen. So I always just make sure I trim those sections off. I've noticed a rogue little yellow piece, so I'm just gonna flatten that as well. So the light green is sorted, and now we've got our dark green, or we've just called it green. So in case some of you haven't used Bondaweb before, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach a section on here. Just wanna check I've got enough, I do. So I always cut a piece smaller than what I need because I don't want the Bondaweb glue going onto my iron. Ask me how I know. So you'll see on my darker green color, I've got a large section all the way around before I put the Bondaweb on. And just like when we attach the bonder web down to the fabric block that we finished, I just hold that down for about five, 10 seconds each time. Keep holding it down. And once you feel comfortable that it's secured on, you just then do that. That's how you would attach the bonder web to your fabric. And I've now got that ready for the show tomorrow for me to do the demo on the show tomorrow. That's already, and that should secure down for a long time. I've had some Bondaweb fabric on, I've had some Bondaweb on fabric for a good six to eight months. As long as you're keeping it in a dry area, I've not had any problem. It does stick for, year, for a very long time. So just like with the other one, I'm leaving a little bit of space all the way around so that there's no chance of glue going on my iron. Holding that down. Sliding that over. So this is now ready as my light green section for the two curved stems and for my leaves. That's what we're gonna be using for these. And my templates, as you saw before, these three templates, I would just line up on here with my little leaves. And you can put the leaves in the corner over there. You would trace those out and just cut them out and that's what you would use there 
And if you're gonna be doing it in a different green, you just pop that on there and it will pop out your templates there. So those are all now ready to go and attach onto your block when you're ready. And you've got more than enough fabric there to have done at least two blocks, possibly three. Now these are all nice and flat, ready to go to be used. This one's got a little bit more of a crease. It's been in my bag for a lot longer than I thought. So I'm giving that an extra go. And then obviously we've got the cream fabric, which is the most important background fabric. This one's very creased. So I'm giving this a good old press now. I'm just gonna go and grab some water. because I hadn't realized I didn't have steam in my iron. Because when you're doing English paper piecing, if you don't press your pieces first, you do end up with the potential of having a, um, a bit of a ripple in your piece. And it can mean your piece might not be exactly the right size that it needs to be. So I always make sure that I've got my fabric tr as flat as I can get it. It may not always work out that way. And as you can see, there's a big crease in this. I then adding a bit more water in it to get rid of as much of the creasing as I possibly can. And that's work to treat. Oh gosh, that really has worked a treat. You can see such a difference there already. Who knew ironing could be so simple? I'll have to tell my husband. Actually, he won't believe me because he keeps reminding me I don't iron, I only press. Right, I think that's gonna be more than enough fabric for us to use for our English paper piecing now. Turning the iron off. Now, when you have, sorry, just going back a bit, when you have cut all your bond, bit, uh, bond web bits out, you'll always end up with little pieces like this. Don't get rid of them because you get some amazing books that will be able to help you show you how to do extra bits and bobs for um, applique and stuff. There's a book that I'm showing on Natasha's show tomorrow, um, Simple Sizzle Quilts, and you can see that the templates on here, some of them are really quite small. So this little leftover bit of green that I've got, you can tell fits over that template quite nicely. And that little bit is that bit over there. You can see that tiny little green dot. So things like this, don't ever throw them away because you can use them. And you'll be astonished on how, if this is on a bias, which this is, you'll be able, astonished at how, what you can do with them. So try not to get rid of those if you have them. So now we're in the situation where we are about to cut out our templates. So the important thing to remember is if you get this wrong, you're going to be kind to yourself and you're going to do the best you can. What we're doing next is we're now taking out, I would prefer working with the darker colors. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out loosely first, and then I'm gonna show you where the best place to cut it is and explain how that works. <clears throat> now I am by no means an EPP expert. This is what I have found works for me. So please, if you found a better way of doing it, I'm okay with that. Just you know, this is my suggestion. You are not bound to it by any stretch. All I am saying to you is that if it goes wrong, you are to be kind to yourself. And remember, it is a piece of fabric. Just because it goes wrong doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. So as you'll see on the edge over here, we've got a little bit of white on the edge there. Now, when these pieces were designed and when they were cut, uh, when they're on the original master sheet over here. 
What this is, is the edge of this line, the actual black line, when you line all the black lines up together, the black lines are meant to go on top of each other. So what will happen is you'll line all of them up together and then it'll measure, the block's meant to be 10 inches square, 10 and a half with um, seam allowance, but we don't have seam allowance on EPP. We will get to that in month 10. But what's important to remember is, if we cut, so if I took that now, and used it, you can see I'm a little bit away from the black line. So that's probably an eighth of an inch. So if I had four pieces going across and I'm an eighth of an inch out all the way along, I'm gonna be a quarter of an inch out on all of my block. So over here, what I would say to you is, you need to cut it that it is halfway along the black line. Now what that means, bear with Caller it as I try and cut this. There we go. So you can see over here, I've cut away half of the black line. So if I put that back, you can see the full black line, hopefully. But I've cut away half of the black line. That's what we want you to be able to do. Because once you've cut away half of the black line and you're consistent all the way along with your cutting, you should then be able to put these all together, line them up like a little giant EPP jigsaw puzzle, and once you've done that, it should then measure 10 inches square exactly. If it doesn't, that's okay, but it is what we're aiming for if you can do that. But it's being that consistent cut all the way along, which does take some time. So you can see at the beginning there, I'm perfect. But on the top here, I've got a bit more dark. So it just goes through it and make sure that you try and be as consistent as you can possibly be. You don't want to mess it up. And if you do mess it up, you're gonna be kind to yourself. Now, paper is a lot cheaper than fabric. So what I always advise people to do, especially with EPP, is lay your block out first. Lay it out and check that it measures 10 inches square. If it doesn't, have a look at each and every single piece and see where it's gone wrong and see if you can now cut it out a second time and it works better. Because getting this bit right the first time is so important. And I'd rather you spent more time cutting out and getting it right than making the block and it'd be ever so slightly too large. So that is our largest piece in the quilt, block seven. So what I'm doing next is I'm gonna do my second largest piece, which is number J. So I'm gonna take my scissors and cut out number J. And like before, I'm roughly cutting these out. The other thing I'm gonna do when I do this is I'm cutting out my reference picture. This is really important because it shows you where everything lies. Now, you can rotate this however you like. You can lay it out however you like. So where I've got my block at the moment, that's the same as the design I've got laid out. Okay, so I just lay that out on the page so that I'm always looking at the right reference, <coughs> right reference for my block, okay? Now this is a process, it takes time. Do not rush, do not hurry. There are many ways of doing this, but you just wanna be enjoying it and being consistent and just taking your time and going from there. So I'm gonna start off by showing you on these pieces here, especially the odd shaped pieces, you've got these two are gonna to go together. Now, when you look at your image, you will see this is dark purple, which is going to be this color. This is my purple, and this is gonna be cream. Now with my purple, it would be quite nice to be able to capture the middle of that heart. So what you can do, you can lay your fabric, you can lay your piece of um, template on your fabric until you find a shape. You can't really tell what I'm doing there. You can lay it down until you find a shape that you find is a pleasing shape for you or a position that's quite pleasing for you. And then once you've done that, lay it on your piece of paper, uh, on your cutting board and 
now you cut it out. Now, what is very, very important to remember is there is no seam allowance on this template. So you need to cut your own seam allowance. I'm gonna be cutting three eighths of an inch. You can cut whatever inch, whatever size you like. I think three eighths of an inch is a good guide because it's actually a bit bigger than three eighths of an inch there, sorry. I think it's a good size to be cutting. Now I have used a rotary cutter for many, 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 many years. I am very confident with a rotary cutter. Do not use a rotary cutter like that if you are not confident. Use a ruler, and by that I mean you take your ruler, you put it on, you measure three eighths of an inch, and you cut it off, okay? And over here you do exactly the same, three eighths of an inch, and you trim it off. I am very experienced on using a rotary cutter. Please do not do that if you are not experienced on using a rotary cutter. Do not hurt yourself. It's very important. Right, so once I've done that, I then pick this up towards the sunshine and I can see if that's where I wanted it. And there we go, there it is, that I'm happy with. Now I glue based, so you get something called a Soline glue pen and they come in blue, yellow or pink as the color of the glue. It does not matter which color you get because they all dry clear. So I'm lying, bleh, I am now putting a layer of blue on there. You can see there's a layer of blue and then I'm taking this and once I've got my layer of blue ink, uh, blue glue on there, I'm now folding this back. And you can see I've now glued that section there. The next piece I'm gonna do, I try and do the short sides first. For me, that works better. And when you do lay these down, try not to get the glue past the piece of paper because when it dries, you end up with little clumps of glue that have dried. So when you try and put your uh, needle through it, you've got a little bit extra resistance because there's a big piece of glue there. And then once you've got that flat, you're then gonna put a little bit of glue on the fabric over here so that it sticks to it. And then you're going straight down this edge over here, trying to avoid the edging. I'm doing it like that. Now that may not be enough glue because I put a thin line on it. So I'd rather put more glue on and not have a problem and get that nice and flat and then fold the fabric up and press it down like that, okay? Now by doing this, you can see this top corner bit has lifted up. So all I'm gonna do here is like, like when you're wrapping a present, you fold that back you put your little glue pen there, add a little bit of extra glue, and then you fold that back down on itself. What's important is to make sure that you haven't lost your point. But tell me that doesn't look beautiful as the pot for your flowers. So that's number J done over here, which is this one over here. We've done number J. And next I'm gonna carry on doing number I. Now, number I is this, the biggest piece in the block. And again, I am gonna be freestyling this with my rotary cutter. I do not advise you to do it. Now, if you want to use scissors, scissors are also really easy to use for this. It's a nice, easy way of doing it. And you can see, I'm gonna cut this chunk off first. And then I'm gonna slide this down because then that will be fine, that will be fine, that will be fine. And I'm just gonna cut off over here. Oop. Okay. And then when I've got it in a position that I'm happy with, I'm then gonna just take my pair of scissors and I'm gonna go and cut off the excess little bits on the end. They would be potentially called your flappy bits on the outside. I'm just taking your little, there we go. Okay, one more to go. 
And this bit is a little bit long. So there we go. We've got a rough shape of, th of fabric, making sure that my, all of my numbers are facing out. It's always important to make sure you've got that because there's nothing more annoying than when you've got so many triangles that are the same size and you've put the, the letter on the inside. It's a pain. So make sure your letters are always out. I've stuck a little bit of glue down. Now, if you do prefer to baste your APP, that's absolutely fine. Um, I personally prefer the glue. You must do what works best for you and just go around and baste your fabric around these um, shapes and get it in how you choose. The glue, um, I started an EPP project about six, seven years ago uh, using some Stuart Hillard fabric. And I, um, I still have the box of the pieces still glued down. And that was a good six, seven years ago. Um, and they're still absolutely solidly glued down. So I'm fine with that. And there we go. <clears throat> You just keep going around the piece all the way around. Now, if you do end up in a situation where you'll see I've got a little bit of glue sticking out there, that little blue bit, do not worry because all that'll happen is that will dry clear and you'll just end up with a little clear bit that was a bit sticky, but it isn't going to be in the future. So it's just a case of going around and doing that. Okay. Oh, I've missed this end bit off there. There we go. Right, so we've now got blocks I and block J ready to go. And we know that they get stitched along this seam. So now I'm gonna stitch these two together. Um, Thread-wise, um, I use this thread that I was given by a very dear friend of mine. I don't know what it is. It's a, a, it's a sort of invisible thread when you stitch with it. Um, it does, I have no, never been able to find where you buy it, but it is gorgeous. Um, Oriful is phenomenal. Um, if you are going to use invisible thread, test it first. And once you've tested it, make sure you iron it because sometimes they do melt. Now, when I do EPP, I always do a sort of locking stitch at the beginning. Um, I have got always use a new needle. It's very important to have a new needle at all times. Your fingers are worth a lot more than a needle is. So I'm doing a little locking stitch going in exactly the same place both times. Now how you do your stitching is entirely up to you. Many people have many opinions about it. I personally don't use a thimble and I prefer to sew away from me. That is what I prefer. Many people prefer to use a thimble and to sew towards themselves whatever works for you. But what you do need to be is consistent all the way along. Now, what I've done over here in the first few stitches is I've actually gone a little bit deeper into my fabric rather than keeping, sorry, talking at the same time is a, ta a skill. Give me two seconds, let me just do a few stitches. So what you're aiming to do is that when you put your needle through is to catch, you should be able to see there, you're catching one purple thread. And then you're aiming to do the same with your pink, with your cream. I'm hoping you can see that. That's what I try and do. You can catch as many threads as you like. You can catch as many as you like. The only reason I try and catch as few as possible is that then you, try, you don't see the stitching on the front. And that to me is more important, not to be able to see the stitching on the front. But I don't, you know, there is no right or wrong. Some people's uh, EPP that I've seen with the stitching showing is absolutely gorgeous. And it really looks very effective with it, especially, for example, in this one, if I was using a purple thread and it was feeding through into the cream at the front, you then have it, the image of the sort of pot eating into the cream and it just melds, it adds into that, um, joining of the two together. It's a lovely way of doing it. So there is no right or wrong. You must do what works best for you.
but it is very therapeutic just to be able to sit and mindfully sew all these little sections together. Now this is the biggest section that you've got. Now when you fold that back, you can see, you can barely tell where the stitching is. Now for me, that's what I want in my quilts because you can barely tell. A bit worried, it looks a bit blurred there. Is it readjusting? I might take it out. When it's finished, what I, when I'm finished this section, I'll show you, I'll take the camera out of the the frame and show you. But I think it's a really nice way of just being able to stop for a bit. And you can take it with you. You can do it any way you like, really. And I've not really seen any English paper piecing flowers like this. There are so many beautiful EPP designs out there, but I've not seen anything like this. And once you get started, you do pick up some speed on it. But as you can tell, we're 40 minutes in and we haven't, we've only done one seam. So it is a longer process by all, it, there's no question, you can't rush this. Now the stitch length that you're looking for, I try and get between 12 and 14 stitches per inch. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe 10. But yeah, get between 12 and 14 stitches is ideal, what you're looking for. And it's just as a trial, you see what works best for you. You might wanna do more, but I do think that if you do less, you run the risk of the seam failing. And if you run more, you then obviously run the risk of it being quite a bulky little seam as well. So I'm not gonna have enough thread to get to the end of the seam, which is a little bit annoying. So it's a bit like Bob and Chicken when you play that with your sewing machine. I am going to lose this. So what I do is I recognize that before the fact. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock it off on this section here. Um, I did a stitch and now I'm going in with my needle and I'm going in on the stitch at exactly the same place. And then when I come out, you can see I've created this little loop over here. I then take my needle and I run it through that thread over there. And that's now tied off my stitch. And I always leave about an inch or three quarters of an inch worth of thread over here, just in case the seam ever does, fa the seam ever does fail, I'm then able to try and salvage that with it. Now, one thing with regards to pulling your thread off, this thread you can see, when you pull it this way, it comes off this way. So I always try and pull the thread off how it was wound on. So if your thread was wound on from the top, I then would pull it from the top. But because this is wound on from this side, and I always cut it at a 45 degree angle, because that 45 degree angle, in theory, should make it easier to thread your needle. Oh my goodness. I have never had that happen before. So this is a really good one, that. It just went straight through. And then I do a triple knot on the end, triple knot over here. Right, and then we're doing exactly the same thing with the initial section, 
So I've done my knot over here, so I'll go back two stitches and then bring my thread past the knot that I've already created. So it's exactly the same as what you would do in a sewing machine. If you start off and you end up stopping a seam, you would then just go back a little bit and try and re-stitch over some of the area that you've done. Okay, so that is the biggest seam on this block. I've only got one stitch left to go and then to lock it all off. Oops, that's the seam. And then we lock it all off. Oh, something's gone a bit haywire there. Right, so that then locks off the block there, okay? And at this point, I'm gonna cut that off. Now, one thing I've noticed is my glue is giving way a little bit over here. So I repress that down, it doesn't seem to have worked. So I just add a touch more glue and there we go, we're sealed. I think when you do manipulate the fabric a bit more, it does cause it to go. So there we go. We've got our pot on our eyepiece over there. Now I'm gonna try and move my camera now. Please don't. I'm hoping this will work. Come on, let's try. Refocus. Okay, so you can see you can't really see any stitches over there. I might just turn my camera around. There you go. So you can see you can't really tell the stitches on that end. You can see how that's worked. The stitches are all virtually invisible. There you go, virtually invisible. And that's ideally what you're looking for. Okay, so that's the triangle onto the piece there. Then you'll go through the pattern and you'll see all the different ways of doing it. Now, I am not gonna have time because it'll take about six hours to do the full tutorial on everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the, one of the most complex sections, which are the little diamonds. And that is out of the orange fabric and the yellow fabric. So we're gonna cut a couple of those, and then I'm gonna cut a triangle at the top as well. So those are the sections that are number B for Bravo and H for Hotel. Those are the sections that we're gonna use now. I'm gonna do two yellow and two gold. Sorry, I'm gonna do one yellow and one gold, and then the cream number B section on there. So apologies, I don't have the time to do it all. The pattern is really concise on how to do it. And I will try, you'll see different sections of this block being described in other blocks because obviously we've got numbers eight and nine as well to do. So just like before, you're cutting halfway between the dark lines. Oh, that was perfect. So that's what you're looking for when it's halfway of the black all the way along. And then, <clears throat> so the diamonds are a little harder to do because you've got the angles to make sure that you've got the angles the right way. And I'll show you when the, with the papers on their own before we add in the fabric.
Right. So, doing this normally, you would have a diamond lining up to a diamond lining up to a triangle. Okay? Diamond, diamond, triangle. So when I line these up, they should fit perfectly. And they do. So what I'm looking to do now is we're going to have, this is my yellow, so my yellow is going to have My yellow is going to be cut out. Let me check if it's the right way. Okay, so that's my yellow. Remember, you've got to keep the H for hotel at the top. Now, you've got to do this consistently. So what I always did was I kept it this way and I started with this line, okay? And then I went anti-clockwise. So I lined this one up here, folded my fabric over, oops, okay. Now it's a funny shape, so you need to just make sure that everything is nice and flat, okay. Then I do this section here, we're going to go anti-clockwise, okay. So I put my glue on there, fold that back. Perfect. Again, anti-clockwise, put my glue on. Sorted. And then I do this last line over there. Now the advantage of doing this is all of your pieces are then folded exactly the same way. And the advantage of that is when you come to put them together, it just nests that little bit easier on your block. Gamble. Okay. Right, so that is our yellow section. And then I've got a cream section at the top. Ooh, that was luck. So that's why I always keep my little scrap bits lying around over here. The triangles, as always, I do the short ends first. Fold that back. And then I do my long end. And by doing that, your long end then folds over. And there we go. So as we're starting to put these together, you've got your yellow ready to go there. And now all we're doing is we're waiting for our ones over here. Now, with this, we've got the choice of fussy cutting, if you want to. Now, I quite like the pinks over there, so I'm going to try and get that little pink one right there. I think that's going to be beautiful. That'll be lovely as a little piece there. Look at that. So exactly like before, I then fold this round to get on. I'm going to start with this edge over here, being consistent all the way along. Then gluing over here. Now again, if you want to baste, that is absolutely your choice. Nothing wrong with basting. Personally, I just prefer the gluing because I think it's a little quicker. And voila. So now we're ready to put these two together. We've got our pink and our yellow, and we've got that there, all right? Now on all of these, the yellow is always to the left. Yellow is always to the left. Now when we come to sew these together, first things first, so I'm gonna tie my knot into my thread. Oops. 
and I always start on a short side of the triangle to one of the sides of the diamond. Usually in this case, what I've done is I have aligned the short side of the cream to one of the um, yellow diamonds. And by that, I mean that seam over there. And I start at the point in the middle. So what I do, oh, come on. So I line these two up like that. And I start from this section and go to the outer section. The advantage of doing that is I know that they're meant to meet there. So it makes my life that little bit easier when I come to the end over here to try and make sure that they align. So now I've got my initial section over here, just like I did with the triangle and the number, section I. I'm gonna put through my first piece and I'm gonna do a double knot over here. I'm gonna do my knot there to secure everything. Right, so now my pieces are stuck together. They are ready to go. My thread's just gone a bit funny. So if you end up with a few little tassels like that, nine times out of 10, one of your threads hasn't gone through. So at that point, I just pull the threads back, get them nice and taut, and then I just go along the whole run as you go. So these are the most complex sides. Uh, the rest of them, the majority of them are just squares and rectangles, except for these diamonds and then putting them together. The pattern I think is quite descriptive as to how you do it. Um, you've just got to take your time with it, be consistent. And if you have any questions at all, my email address and everything is in the pattern. So please, by all means, share it. Uh, not share it, contact me and let me know what you have a problem with and I will happily do what I can to try and help. Now the advantage of starting off with this short seam is apparent when I then uh, try and attach what I called my orange diamond because now what happens on the second attachment is that you can do it in one fail swoop. Now, often you'll end up doing this and you'll have a little thread there. All that's happened is one of your threads has been caught. It hasn't pulled through. So just tug on one of your pieces of thread, untangle it, pull it down. You'll see, oh, you'll see that if you do that, you can pull it down. Okay, now we're coming to the end over here. Let me just zoom in a bit there. And you'll notice that the end of the piece is just there. So you don't want to stitch past the end of the piece because it'll mean your block is a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So as you're stitching along, keep checking to see where the end of your English paper piecing bit is and don't stitch past that because you then run the risk of your block being ever so slightly too big. There's no problem if it is, it's just a case of be aware of it to make sure that you are staying on track with what is in fact the size of your EPP. Okay, so now I'm at the end of my EPP section there. I've done my last stitch, and again, like before, I do a locking stitch, which is just another stitch in exactly the same um, hole that I've gone into previously. And then when I pull it out, I get to a nice little knot there, and I just run my needle through that knot, and I've tied that off beautifully. Okay, so that then brings into 
the first diamond along there. Now you can see that is perfect. That's exactly what you want. This point here meets, this point here meets. That is exactly what we're looking for. Now before I attach the other section, I'm just gonna grab my thread. I was having a few little problems there with it twisting. So all I'm doing now is I'm making sure that I've got my, the edge of my thread in place there and I'm just gonna run my finger down here and you can see that that's twisting there. Get those little twists out and then tie my knot in the end of it. Right, so at this point, we are now attaching this piece into here. Now you can decide which way around you want them to go. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go like that. And you start, so what you can do is line your piece up perfectly there. And you can see where it lines up brilliantly at the point there. And then you go all the way down to the bottom here and you feel where the beginning of your EPP pieces are because you will end up with extra fabric folded in that section. So you just feel to where the EPP is and that is where you put your stitch in and do your locking stitch to start with. Okay, it's quite clear to see over there because as you move the fabric, that's the point there. So you just then start your stitch right at that point and that will be the beginning, the base of your um, funny shaped point. If I was better in trigonometry, I'd have been able to tell you what shape it was, but I wasn't. Right, trapezoid, is that right? Right. And then you just sew along this little seam over here. Ow. For me, I always find the first few stitches are the biggest pain because you've got these little flappy bits on the end where your thread gets caught. So I find as the beginning, it's harder than in the middle or at the end, but there we go. I think we've now passed that. With regards to the length of your thread, if you want to do this um, successfully, make sure that the length of your thread is no longer than from your elbow to your wrist. Uh, you don't want to be doing longer than that um, because you run the risk of your thread twisting, getting knots, getting caught. So that is the rule of thumb. Or rule of wrist. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I'm hilarious, I tell you. Hilarious. Right, so I'm now at the point where I'm in the middle. Um, I make sure that I do two stitches in that middle because those seams sometimes do fail. And then all you're doing next is that you open that up and then you fold it down so that you now can stitch along that short little space over there.
Now these sections, you're gonna make six of these, um, and then the six together, you're gonna then sew into three different sections, which will be your corners um, of this block. And it is a really pretty, pretty little block to, not, to do. And that is how we are gonna do block seven. So I've shown you the applique at the beginning. You would then stitch that down however you choose. And then we've got the EPP sections here. This is the most um, complicated section in the quilt. Um, but I think that you can see it's actually not that complicated when you break it down to little bit by little bit. So I think hopefully you will find that works better for you. Right, only a few more stitches to go. Two more and then a locking stitch. One and two. There we go. And we then have the most difficult piece in the quilt. That is it. So that section over there is this section over here. So you can see you're gonna make one for there, 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 and one for there. So we've done this big section over here, which is number I. We've done number J, we've put those together. That's this section over here. And then this little bit is going to sit over here. No, it's not, bear with. It's gonna sit over here and over here and over there and go all the way around the block through there. So I think that that, oh, too close, too close. <laughs> Sarah Payne is here, the gorgeous Sarah Payne. Hello, my darling, how are you doing? Um, Anne Davies, four blocks, how many, seven? Yeah, four blocks. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the chat thing. I, so there we go, that is our block for tomorrow. Um, if you wanna see the finished block in the plain colorway, this is what we're making. Gorgeous. I love it. And it was meant to be pieced. And then when I pieced it, it looked like that. And Sylvia said, my God, if that's what yours looked like, mine's going to look worse. So that was why we ended up with English paper piecing, because I didn't want people crying and not having a lovely block, because it is a lovely block. And I think by doing English paper piecing, you make it that little bit more special. Thank you very much, Sarah. I really appreciate that. I think it's a beautiful little block. Really, really fun. And yep, yeah, if it is bigger or smaller, because, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, it is going to be different. We will talk about that in month 10. I will be with you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock on Natasha McCarthy and Natasha Makes. Um, I'm going to turn my camera around because we've ended up with a little bit of a windstorm out there. I've got my doors open. I'm a giraffe, but now I'm just a bit worried my giraffe's going to blow over. So, yeah, apologies for that. Um, thank you very much, Derek. Thank you. And thank you, Jenny Totterdell. That's very kind. Um, so, yeah, I will see you on Natasha tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Um, look after you and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.